Hey everyone, it's Emily. Welcome to Mama from Scratch. Today I'm going to be sharing with you 20 high-end Dollar Tree DIYs for fall home decor. All of these projects turned out so beautiful. Some of them are decor dupes, so you can get the look for less, and I hope you guys enjoy it. A lot of these products are out at the stores now, so make sure you head over there to get them if you need some. If not, craft with your stash at home. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I have a ton more to share with you throughout the season, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it and are excited. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. For this DIY, you're going to want this pumpkin sign, and we're going to actually use the back of it. So you can actually have it as a two-way sign if you'd like. I'm going to remove the cord, and then I'm going to take a white coloring pencil and create in a border all the way around the edge part of it. And then I'm going to fill the inner part of that border with white paint. I'm using Waverly chalk paint here. And then once I get that filled in, I'm going to kind of brush the uh, paint in the shape of an actual pumpkin. I feel like that helps the look of it. Then I'm going in with a sharpie and I am writing out the words that I want. You can um, print this out if you want to or if you have like a Cricut or something that would totally work as well. And then I'm going back in with uh, my paint and using black and then I'm drawing these little um, leaves here on the side and I think it's super cute and really adorable. It's actually a Hobby Lobby dupe and you'll see here in a second how ours compares to theirs. And then I'm taking that Waverly Antiquing Wax and brushing that on the sides uh, just to enhance the border. Then I'm taking some of my Buffalo Check ribbon that I had. This is from Walmart from Christmas last year. And then just wrapping that around since it's wired and I'm just going to glue that to the top. And this is the way the sign came out and I think it's really good and it's in a great dupe. For this DIY we're going to be using two pumpkin signs. The first one is this with the little stand and we're going to actually remove the front part of it. If you don't want to you can just put the uh, paint on the back of it. It's completely up to you. But it easily removes and then I'm going to sand that down and then I'm painting this first pumpkin white. Again you can choose the coloring that you want and then I'm of course going to bring that paint up in kind of a curved motion to mimic an actual pumpkin look for it. Now I'm going to take the Elephant Color in Waverly and I'm just going to add a little bit on, a little bit heavy, and then dry brush that out. And again, enhancing the way a pumpkin would actually look, adding that kind of curve shape in there. This sign is actually a great Hobby Lobby dupe on its own, but we're going to be using the back of it so you can again have it double sided if you want. I'm taking some regular glue, you can use Mod Podge if you like, and I'm going to brush that all the way on the back of the pumpkin. And I'm taking this um, wrapping paper from Dollar Tree. I love the print of this and I'm totally into blues for fall this year. And I'm just putting that all the way on the back of the pumpkin, cutting off the excess and then I'm going to take that leaf and then glue that onto the front of it. Now I'm going to take on some stickers and I'm going to spell out a couple words here. You can always, you know, again, you can just paint these on or you can use the stickers. Stickers are really easy and I was missing a few letters so I just went ahead and used my Sharpie and you couldn't even tell that they were painted on versus um, the stick on letters. Now I'm just taking a little brown paint and I'm adding that to the top of the pumpkin to enhance it a little bit. I took the bottom off the one pumpkin and then glued on the larger pumpkin and now we're going to glue on that little pumpkin again and I'm going to stick that on. Then I'm going to use the straw bow from the small pumpkin, add that to the top, and then I'm going to use these little wooden cutouts and just add the leaves on there. So I thought I like the way the natural wood looks, but I thought it turned out super cute and this was my inspiration from Hobby Lobby. For this DIY, I'm using two of the larger wreath forms and I'm using some of this jute wire twine just to um, wrap them together. I tried gluing them, it didn't work as well, so I thought I would just tie them together. If you don't have it, you can just use some regular um, wire. I'm adding in some florals from Dollar Tree, the peonies, some white sunflowers, and then also the uh, clip-on leaves. They have them in brown gold and also like a green color. 
And then I'm going to take this gather wood cut out from Dollar Tree. This is new this year and it's such a nice size. Again, I'm going to take that wrapping paper after I applied the glue on it and rub that on. And if you let it wait to dry, then it basically just pops right off. I use my um, pencil to kind of poke through some of the smaller letters. It was a little time consuming, but overall I love the way it looks. Of course, you can just paint it as well if you want, but I like this blue wrapping paper the Dollar Tree has out right now. I think it's really pretty. I'm just going to glue that on to the two pumpkins, or the two wreaths I should say, and this is the way the pumpkin turned out and I really like it. For this DIY we're using this cute little um, I don't know, picture that Dollar Tree carries and I pulled off the top thinking it would be plain on the bottom and it was the exact same. So I painted it white with some chalk paint and then I used some stick on letters to spell out hello autumn and I thought I would just draw out the autumn and more of a Ray Dunn theme. I don't know if I like the all the capital letters for the hello part but that's okay we can change that later and then I'm adding some hot glue and gluing that back on and then I'm taking some jute twine and I'm going to outline the very edge of the white um, piece and then I'm also going to um, do it to the outer part of the frame as well just to give it a little bit more character and frame it in a little bit. And I thought this was just nice because the bingham check was already done for us. Now you could leave it just like this, but again I added some of those little wood stick-on letters and gluing them on is definitely advised because the stick-on doesn't quite work as well, but I think it turned out really cute. For this DIY we're using another Dollar Tree sign of course and I'm removing the inner pumpkin here. It just pops right out and um, we're going to actually use that later on and I'm going to use this um, yarn that they have. I found it in this really pretty blue color. Again, as you can tell, I'm kind of obsessed with the blue color right now. And I'm just going to start wrapping that around the top of it and then after every about three or four rows I glue it um, around and I'm just going to do this all the way around the frame of the pumpkin and then I'll kind of overlap it and everything until I get all that wood covered up and then you can just cut that string off. Now you can leave the sign the way it is but I wanted to trace it out and then use some really cute scrap paper and cut that shape out again and this can be a two-sided sign I really like doing that because it's really fun and it's easy and then you can have it two different ways for each holiday. You can apply glue or Mod Podge and then go ahead and spread that out and put your scrap paper on. I'm using this um, what are these called? Uh, wall decals from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to use the word stay and then I'm using the larger letters in Dollar Tree that are found by the phone board and I'm spelling out warm and then again I'm using one of those uh, stick on leaves. Um, it has like a little clip on the back and I love the burnt orange color and I thought it'd be really pretty with a white peony on there and this is the way it turned out. I really like this one. Here is a closer look at that yarn that I used in the last DIY and you'll be using this again if you want to. I went ahead and made three long strings just wrapping them about the same length and then I'm going to make a little knot at the very top and then we're going to actually put something at the very end and we're going to start braiding this. Just a normal braid here. It goes fairly quickly. I made my string a about 50 inches long and that was really good because once it's braided it ends up being around three feet or so. Um, so I'm taking a Dollar Tree pumpkin that I had left over from last year. They will have them this year as well. The inside of it was kind of cut out so I just took some of my leftover um, white fabric and I went ahead and just tucked that in and let the ripples kind of be on the side of the folds anyways. Um, I don't know the measurement on this, but I want to say it was around maybe 12 by 18 or so. And then if you have like this where it barely fits, you can always add a little bit of um, hot glue there and um, pin that down. And that's exactly what I did. Now if you use a thinner fabric, that'll work well. This is a canvas, so it was a little bit stiff. but. 
you know, again, I'm using what I have on hand. I'm taking that um, braided um, yarn and I'm just gonna glue it down and start making the pumpkin shapes. And I try to stay on the indents and you can see how I'm just kind of wrapping it up. So I'm using the hot glue here to hold it down in place. And I'm not going all the way around. You'll see um, as I go how I'm just kind of looping it here and there. I had the tiniest bit left over, which was perfect for a little sprout. You could leave it like this, but I thought it would look really cute taking that wire jute twine that Dollar Tree now carries and then wrapping that around. You can see how the bottom, how I didn't um, actually center it, and it works out really well. So I um, glued the rest of that on, and I think this looks really cute. And then I'm taking the leftover jute twine, and I'm kind of wrapping that around my finger making a nice little spiral here and then you're going to fan that out so it's wider on the bottom and then skinnier at the top and you can just tuck that little piece in and you'll want to add a little hot glue to the twine that way it sticks to the wire and then I'm going to glue that to the top of the pumpkin so that'll be the little um, stalk coming out. Um, a really easy project. Again, use different materials, whatever you have. I thought it was really cute. Um, again, you can customize the color of it. For this DIY, I'll be using the blue peonies and the white peonies and then the yellow sunflowers. This is hops bush and this is new and it's so pretty. Um, I wanted to show that to you. I'll also be using the hello sign that's down there in the back that's from Dollar Tree. And then I made this wagon wheel. It's a hula hoop with wooden skewers and then foam board in the middle and I spray painted it black. And find the file that I filmed for this to show you the new version I made, but sorry. I added more skewers to this one. I wanted a tighter look, more of like a bicycle wheel. So I started by altering all of the leaves that I pulled off from the stems and then I added um, the sunflowers left a gap and then I um, started alternating the blue and white peonies and working my way down and these are just so pretty. I love how real they look even though there's probably not blue peonies out there. I like the color of them especially with the yellow. It's so pretty. And then I just kind of tucked in a little bit of the greenery that comes with the stems um, in there. And then I filled in the middle part just a little bit because I realized I wasn't going to put what I wanted there to begin with. And then I took this Hello Wood sign that Dollar Tree carries and I took some wooden beads that I had. Dollar Tree carries wooden beads but they're not natural looking so I have some from Amazon. I'll leave them linked down below for you. I put them on a wooden skewer and then glued those on top and on bottom of the Hello sign and then glued that um, to the wagon wheel. Placed a couple of those wooden leaves on there and this is the way it turned out and I'm obsessed. I think it's so beautiful. You have to tell me what you think. I just think it looks so high-end. I'm just so happy with this one. For this DIY, you're going to want your favorite ribbon that's wired and then you're going to keep the ribbon wheel and you're going to add a bead of glue on there and you're going to start um, gluing on your ribbon and making kind of like a little bit of a, um, a bow to it. Um, and that way it kind of creates that pumpkin shape if you see what I'm saying here so you can make it however large or small you want this and you are going to add that on there you're going to add another bead of glue and we're just going to layer this back and forth and you'll be able to use one string of it and then that little extra you have left over you can make the little top of it you can add greenery to it if you want to there's lots of possibilities I'll show you another one that I'm making as well just kind of a fun little way that you can make pumpkins and you only need one product really to make it unless you have a couple snips of greenery you could add that to the top but I think they're really adorable. Here are the supplies that I'm using for this project. I'm taking some um, leftover fabric that I had. You can use whatever fabric you want. I'm going to take a rubber band and I'm going to um, tie that around the bottom part of my fabric. Really simple. And then you're going to take some glue and you're going to fuse the two ends together just on the side. You're going to leave the top of it open. 
really easy and then you're going to fold it um, right side out that way that um, rubber band is on the inside of it and then I'm going to take some Dollar Tree rocks and put that in there this will help it stand up then I'm going to take some pillow foam and add that to the top uh, and the inside and then I'm going to tie um, the fabric at the very top as well you can use a rubber band if you want to um, but I just used some jute twine and then I'm going to take some white ribbon here and I'm going to loop it and then wrap it around the top stock and then wrap it again around the bottom and then tie a knot. Of course you can add a however many of these you want but this is again just a general idea and then you can tweak it however you want to. Then I'm going to wrap the top with some Dollar Tree ribbon here. It's this really pretty lace one that they always carry. I like it, like it a lot. And then I'm just going to glue that to the very top and I'm going to glue on a leaf and then you can also put a pine cone or something on there as well if you wanted to but really easy super cute I'm trying to show you a couple different ways that you can make pumpkins because you know it's part of fall and there's just so many out there and a lot of them are quite expensive so I wanted to give these ideas to you Another way you can make it is just by taking your fabric, putting the rocks in it, which I do suggest you do that, putting your stuffing in it, and then you can just pull it together and then again use the um, rubber band um, or you can start gluing it together. This one I didn't have enough fabric so I ended up gluing it together, layering the pieces and I kind of twisted that leftover fabric at the top and then I took some twine and wrapped that around and then just kind of gave it... Um, a little bit more of a rustic look but I think it's really fun to be able to make your own pumpkins because you can customize it to the color scheme that you're doing for the season and you can also use leftover scrap fabric that you might have around which I think is really fun too nothing goes to waste and it just turned out really adorable For this, I'm actually spray painting this with just some white paint. Use like a chalk paint, it's much thicker and will fill in the holes a little bit better as well. And then once you have that done, let it dry obviously so it can detox, it does smell a little bit. And then take that back inside and then you're gonna take a knife and cut out about a two inch diameter hole in it. And you'll wanna save that foam piece for a little bit later. I'm actually gonna glue it down to the center of the pumpkin. The next step is to take some sticks. You can use thinner ones than these. These are just all the wood dowels that I had. And you're gonna take these smaller pumpkins that are sold in a three pack from Dollar Tree. And you're gonna add a little bit of hot glue to the very bottom and you're just gonna stick that stick in there. Um, that way it gives us some height because they're gonna be basically like the floral stems. If you have wire, you can use wire for this. I thought this would be really pretty to take the rope and put it down all the lines of the pumpkin just to make it look a little bit more pronounced. So you'll just wanna measure from the top of the pumpkin to the bottom and then pull that rope apart and you'll get three strings. Take your glue gun and go right down the line, the dip line of the pumpkin and then place that in there. And it can be a little squiggly if you want or if you want it really straight, do what works for you. I did this to all of the dips in the pumpkin. This will be how the pumpkin looks. I know the bottom and top don't look that great, but don't worry, it'll be covered up. So don't worry about that part. Next, you're gonna take your florals and go ahead and trim those down. You'll definitely need some wire cutters for those. Now, Dollar Tree does carry wheat. I just had some fresh stuff on hand, so that is what I'm using. And again, see, I needed to cut it down just a little bit more. So don't be afraid to you know, cut your florals. You can leave them in the bushes if you want to and just spread them out. It's completely up to you. But I alternated between the feathers and the wheat, the pine cones, and then added the pumpkins in. And then you'll want to take the cotton stem that they actually have and you can cut that down a little bit. Now you can of course leave your pumpkin just like this, but then I saw my ribbon and I thought, oh, how pretty would that be if I alternated the stripes? So I'm just taking a little bit of glue and then gluing down the ribbon and the things were separated just enough to where the ribbon fit. You can trim the ribbon if you need to, it's not a big deal. And you can do this every other piece or every piece, it's completely up to you, but I'll show you the way it looks both ways. Uh, 
Uh, for the next DIY, you're going to need uh, wood letters or decals, a glue gun, paint of your choice, and then this pumpkin sign with the footballs on it. Or you can just find the pumpkins itself. My Dollar Tree does not have just the pumpkin forms. So I am using the garland and I'm just pulling the um, football parts off and then I'm adding some hot glue where the ribbon is to shorten up the ribbon a little bit. It's not necessary. You can leave it the way it is. It's completely up to you. And sand off that glittered um, lettering that is on there. It does puff out just a little bit, but don't worry about it. Next, I'm using brown, gold, a little bit of black, and I'm going to be using green, but I'm taking white Waverly chalk paint, and I'm spreading that all over the pumpkin itself, and you'll want to do a nice thick coat on this. Of course, if you want to speed up the drying process, get out your blow dryer. So the next step was to take a little bit of the black paint and then um, apply that to the wood letters. Dollar Tree does carry these. They carry a couple different styles depending on which store you go to really. Saw a sign at Joann's and I thought I could totally recreate that except theirs was more green and orange and I didn't want those colors. So I'm using the gold and a little bit of brown for more neutrals. You could do grays and blacks. You could do pink and purple. You could do orange and greens if you want to. It's completely up to you, but you can see how I'm kind of feathering that down. I'm dry brushing it down the center of it and I'm giving it a very nice rustic look. I'm outlining the edges and then just coming up from the bottom to give it that little bit of a depth. And of course the signs are um, kind of curved which helps the appeal of them as well so just work with it and then take the darker color and kind of highlight in between your lighter pieces giving that texture and that depth and it gives it a really realistic look and um, you can use whatever color it's more of a muted matte color and I did the tip of the pumpkin and I think it just accentuated it and see how it kind of draws down in the middle Kind of brings it out and makes it look real and I just think it's so pretty. So I repeated the same process to all three pumpkins. Now that um, they are dry, I'm going to apply the decals. I wanted to show you what it looked like with both. To take some Mod Podge and just cover up the decal letters that way it'll wear better. So this is how the sign came out and I think it is so pretty. I love that metallic gold on there just to highlight it. And again, you can do whatever you would like with it. This is how it looks hanging. But I also wanted to show you what it would look like if you did it as a sitting sign. So I'm going to be using this little thankful sign that you can get at the Dollar Tree as well. And what I decided to do was score off the plaid on it. I really like that and I thought that this looked better than the red and orange one. But again, they have two different types of signs you could use for this, so use whatever you would like. I added a little bit of glue to the tips of it and then just glued that together, making it basically a skinnier sign depth-wise. And then I took the one end piece, cut that in half, and then added that on each side to cover it up and make it just basically a smaller box. And then I took some popsicle sticks and cut them down a bit and then I'm just going to glue those to the back of each of the pumpkin leaving a little bit of extra so that way I can glue it to the inside of the sign um, and it will stand up for us. Again, you can do this however you would like. It's ugly up to you. I overlaid mine just a little bit. That way it would fit properly into the sign. And I think it came out so cute. You could leave it just like this, but I wanted to cover up the popsicle stick. So I ended up using a little bit of rope for this part, just cutting it down. I had the first piece go around each of the edges. And then I did a second piece because there's still a little bit of a gap. And I added that in. You could do greenery in this. You could do whatever you like. But I think this is just absolutely adorable. I love it and I have leaves, a glue gun, pumpkins, um, a florals of your choice. I'm going to be using some cream paint and then I'm going to be using these two pumpkin signs as well as this wagon wheel. I have a full tutorial on how I made that during springtime so I will leave that video link down below. It's extremely easy. It's using a hula hoop and some long wooden dowels and some foam board. So to speed up the process of removing this label, I heated it up. Still didn't want to come off. It just 
I sprayed it with the white spray paint, but it was a little too stark for me. So I let that dry and then I took the other sign and used a knife just to cut off the harvest blessing part of it. And I then took this cream color paint from um, Waverly and I poured way too much out. I wanted to show you the realities of doing DIY. Guys, I mess up a ton. It's a give and take. Some days it goes well, other days I just make a mess so I wanted to show you that but see how much it's warming it up a bit and I thought this would go better with the color scheme that I'm doing um, just so it wouldn't be so stark so now I'm just taking the lamb's ear and I use two pieces of that that's from Walmart they have two different versions of it um, and this one was I believe two dollars and then they have this weird eucalyptus one this is usually 97 cents to two dollars depending on again which style you get they have so many options I just like it because you get a little bit more than Dollar Tree so I used one sprig of that and then just cut into pieces and layered that and then I added a cotton stem on each side which came from Dollar Tree along with the these burlap wired leaves I really like these there's about five in a pack so I just um, alternated them throughout the wreath and then just add a couple more florals of cream in there I added these mums that are also from Dollar Tree Now I'm just using the moss color and Waverly uh, paint and I'm just highlighting the leaf just to give it a little bit more depth and I wanted it to have a little bit more dimension and then I will be gluing that uh, Harvest Blessing sign onto the front of this and then gluing it onto the wreath. all the items that you will need um, so go ahead and grab whatever size fence picket you would like and then I'm using some gloves a rag and then this Jacobson stain you're gonna want some transfer paper I'll leave mine linked down below printed out letters for the word and then I'm using some Waverly chalk paint but you can use whatever acrylic paint you really want go ahead and lay out your letters that you printed out on your computer pretty simple to do and then once you have that then you can determine the size and how much of the fence post you want to um, trim off and cut then just start by staining the wood your color of choice you could paint the wood too if you didn't want to stain it it's completely up to you the Jacobson comes out really nice looks really nice and rich looking then I just take my transfer paper underneath the letters and then I just eyeballed it you can completely measure this out if you wanted to I just got a little lazy and didn't just trace around your letters and it will leave a mark on there that way you can see where you are at the only thing I did measure was um, between the letters and I left an inch and a half and you have a sponge uh, brush but you can use a regular paintbrush again I just was outside and just used what I had and of course uh, you can see the dog is sitting there with me and just go ahead and start filling in those letters it's really simple and you can make one for fall you can make one for just in general like someone that says welcome to our home or something like that and then when Christmas time approaches I will be painting the other side with something that is Christmas related I haven't determined what that will be yet but as you can see it's really simple quick DIY um, this probably took me half an hour to do completely You will want white paint, antique wax paint, some paint brushes, wood leaves, glue gun, wire cutters, pumpkin sign, and you don't need the florals <laughs> at all. I changed my mind on that. So I'm taking Waverly white paint, and I like this stuff because it's really thick and it dries super fast. Then I'm taking that antique wax um, glaze, which is by Waverly as well, and putting it on the leaves. And I actually ended up only using one leaf for this project, not all four. But this acts kind of like a stain, so if you don't have this, you could also use like a walnut color stain. The next step was to take some gold paint, and I'm doing this to the bottom of the area, um, or the bottom pumpkin, I should say, and just kind of doing dry brushing strokes and working my way up from the bottom to the top just to kind of frame it in and you'll notice that my strokes have a little curve to them that is so that we can create that pumpkin shape um, with this to the very top one as well and then also to the bottom of that top pumpkin 
For some reason, I guess I cut out the part where I cut off the wings of the top hat. I don't know where that part went, so I just used my wire cutters to trim that off so it doesn't look like he's wearing a hat. <laughs> Pumpkins don't have hats. Um, now I'm taking that sage green and I'm working that into the middle one and again just highlighting that and I'm kind of going a little bit darker at the very bottom of each and the top of it. That way we can kind of create that depth there as if the pumpkins are actually stacked on each other. Now I'm going to go in with black paint and I'm going to again I'm creating more depth at the bottom of each pumpkin. And I'm doing this and I'm shading out the outsides just a little bit for the top and the bottom one so I didn't want them just to be gold. I decided to just go in with a sharpie and write on this. My original plan was to use the leaves for this but I didn't like the way it looked in the end. So I just wrote welcome to our home. You can use stick on letters if you want for this or freehand it like I did or paint them on. It's completely up to you. I added a little bit of glue to the bottom of that leaf and then took some um, straw twine and made a bow out of it and then I just add a little bit of black and gold paint to the very top of the pumpkin and this is the way it turned out. I really really like it. I think it's beautiful. It's simple. You can have it say whatever you want. Welcome to our patch. I think it looks so high end. Probably like $23 at the store and we made it for two bucks. tree still has this pumpkin. All I did was remove the straw and then paint the back of it white and I did it in kind of a wispy round stroke there as you can see. Then the next step was to take the leaves and then use the antique wax. You can again, you can use stain, you can paint these whatever color you want. I'm going to take this welcome sign here and I'm just going to paint it black. You can spray paint it, so, um, but get that all covered with some black or whatever color you want to make your welcome part. You can leave it metal if you like. And then I'm taking that um, wood leaves and gluing them down and I, you can use whatever many you want. I like the way three looked. So you can see that here. And the black is from the previous project, so I will cover that up. But I just wanted to show you how I did the pumpkin in the beginning. And I just took that leaf, the green one, and then played that over. The sunflower came from another sign that we'll be using here on the next project. But I just glued on the welcome part, and it's super cute just as is. And then I just took a little bit of white paint to cover up the existing black marks that were on there that I had in the... Um, my bin so I just took off the top part I covered up the two other signs with white paint I ended up doing one full coat and then a half a coat if that makes any sense I wanted to still be able to see the writing that was underneath of it um, again depending on what color you use you may or may not be able to see it went over the writing with it you can see how it says patch there you can see it just a little bit of the white in there and it made it great for tracing so again you can use whatever colors you want but I thought this was just so cute and then to add even more character to the sign they have these stick on pumpkins and I thought this orange was just cute wasn't too bold and then I took the plain one and I did it with the antique wax I layered those on top of each other. If you're going to put this outside, you'll need a little bit more glue on there. And then I just took a little bit of brown and dry brushed that over the sign just to give a little bit of an aged look as the pumpkin has. And then I just added some glue to the top of the sign, glued on the pumpkin that we made. And I love the way this turned out. It's so cute. You'll have to let me know if you've recreated. suggest using scrap paper if you do not like to paint it's okay it's just an easy way out you also can use a pumpkin to create your shape um, for the back of the sign if you want to it's completely up to you I know sometimes people get intimidated by some of the crafts um, please don't there are ways to make it easier for yourselves as in you know using something to trace around and do things so I'm creating a shiplap sort of paint job here. It didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted to but the light um, paper I had was too light and then the dark one was too dark. So I was trying to create a medium tone here and I'm just kind of dry brushing it on and the reason I'm not doing the middle is because we're going to be painting that as a pumpkin. I promise it'll look better in the end. <laughs> I traced out my pumpkin and then I um, taking the white paint and brushing that in in the similar strokes 
of a way the pumpkin would look just because you can see it and so I feel like visually when you're up close to something it's nice to have that little added texture to it. Again, it's optional. You can frame this out too if you want to. The next step, um, I did this project before I used the antique wax on the last one so if I would have done this for this the antique wax would work fine but in this one I used to use uh, some of the brown paint I was using before and then I took some black paint and just feathered that in to mimic these um, the stem of the leaves, not the stem, but the, I don't know what you call that part, I forget, I'm sorry. And then I took a little bit of the white, and then I also took a little bit of gold just to highlight it and make it more pronounced, again adding more depth to the leaf itself, giving it a little bit of character. You can do whatever you like for this. You can do this in greens, you can do it solid. Next step was to take some um, black enamel paint. You want like a really high gloss paint for this, um, just so it stands out a little bit. You don't really want a flat paint. And then I'm just highlighting it and making bulges of where the pumpkin would look like um, it had um, kind of rusted out or sort of. I wanted the pumpkin to look like it was enamel. Um, Joanne's had a pumpkin on a sign that looked like this and I was like, I could totally recreate that. So I'm just again highlighting that pumpkin shape. You can add as a very little or as much as you want, but you definitely do some bold lines on there. You want it to be enameled looking. Uh, make it look old and as if it's been aged for a while. You know, you found it in an antique shop. That's what we're going for here. So just layer that in and then um, I'm going to take the um, leaf that's dried, add a little bit of glue on the back and glue that down and then I'm going to take that welcome sign and place that on front. Again, use whatever saying you want, but I really like the way it turned out. I did it sideways too so it would fit better. But I think it's really pretty. It's rustic and I feel like it looks old and I like that about it. It has some character. For this DIY I'll be using the back of this uh, 4th of July sign and I really think this is so cute. I could not help myself. I ended up using this blue color that I had and it's just so pretty it is so vibrant i love it so i actually should have just taped this off but i ended up just using my ruler to basically create a border again and you can see where i went over a little bit but i did one solid coat of the blue paint Now Dollar Tree carries the wooden beads, but you usually have to paint them, so I like the raw wood ones I have. I have the link down below for you to get them off Amazon. They're a really good price. And I decided to paint um, half of this stick that I already had on a skewer and paint them blue. I think they're so pretty, guys. Um, and then I ended up taking the other half and using my Waverly Antiquing Wax on it. And I love this stuff. It just gives that beautiful wood tone without the stink of actual stain and everything. You guys have to pick it up. And this little bottle has lasted me almost, I think, a year and a half. So a little bit goes a long way with this stuff. And I decided to use the antiquing wax on the border of the sign as well, just to richen up the color of the wood and everything. And again, you can use this with any type of wood um, piece that you might have, and it works great. Next, I took these metal letters that Dollar Tree carries. Um, this is a stash that I had from last year, but they're going to be getting them in soon. Um, of course, you can write it on, but it's super easy that they already have it done. I went ahead and glued that on, and then I took my... Um, ivory color in the Waverly paint and then just put B on there and again if you're not ready for fall it's totally fine but I just couldn't help myself I thought it looked so pretty next I took my ruler and just placed it on the side and then just did a couple stripes with the ivory color paint and once I did this I actually realized it looked like one of the shirts I had from Old Navy <laughs> so funny um, so now I'm taking um, some twine that Dollar Tree carries and I'm going to take those beads and I'm going to do two raw wood beads and then put a um, stained one on and then a blue one and then just repeat that for the entire thing. And of course you can choose the pattern that you want. But once you get those all on your string then you're going to tie that 
onto your sign. I could not be happier with the way the sign turned out and it's actually double-sided now which is awesome but I think it looks exactly like the Hobby Lobby one that I got the inspiration for it is so we're doing high-end DIYs using Dollar Tree products. You'll have to let me know which one you prefer better. For the next high-end DIY project, we're going to be using just a spare piece of wood, but you could use the same sign I used in the last DIY, that'd be totally fine. I have some wood glue that you could use, you can find at Dollar Tree, or you can just use some hot glue um, for wood projects if you want, or just use regular hot glue, it's clearly up to you. You could also use um, the super glue gel on this. So I'm taking four Jenga blocks and putting those down, and then I'm going to add some wood glue along with a little bit of hot glue um, just to get that initial adhesion because I didn't have any clamps for this. And I'm just going to press it on the bottom and it's going to be flush with the bottom of the other board. And I cut these. Now these are just spare pieces of wood that I had in there. You could use the wooden rulers that Dollar Tree carries. I need three packs for this. That way you could get four large ones for the sides and then you would have the other ones cut about a third of the size. So the sides are around four inches and then the length is around 12 inches for this little tray that we're making here. And so I'm just going to repeat that process and then when I do the second board, I'm not leaving it flush with the other board. I'm actually raising it up about a fourth of an inch. This is all personal preference, but since this is a Jacquard dupe on this, I want to try to get it exactly like the one that we're doing from Kirkland's. And so you can see here on the side how I'm just doing that, I'm adding a little bit of hot glue and then... Um, Obviously, I probably should have made my boards a little bit longer if I wanted them to overlap, but I think they look fine just like this. Now I'm just going to lightly brush on some of that antiquing glaze from Waverly so it has a nice stained effect on the wood. Again, I'm going to be using one of those metal letters that came in that package from Dollar Tree, adding some glue on it, and then I'm going to press this down. Of course, you can choose whatever wording that you want, but I think it turned out super cute. I just added some greenery to it, but I love this. I love the style of this, and it looks just like the Kirkland's one, but of course, for cheaper. And then some stencils. These are from the Dollar Tree. I got Kirby and straight ones. And then the paint is craft um, fabric paint from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm just using this little um, sponge brush here and then a paint brush if you wanted to and then a paint tray and a pencil. I'm going to show you both different styles here. The first one I'm using the printed words and I'm just going to align that wherever I want that on my napkin to show. And I'm just going to be tracing on one word here and it can be whatever you so choose. I just trace the outside of the word and do that to the entire um, thing. Just I just held the fabric down too, so just try not to adjust it too much or stretch the material. That way you don't have any weird looking letters. You know, just take your fabric paint. You can add it on there um, just by using the tip. The tip is very fine and really uh, skinny, so it worked out really well just kind of writing it as if you were writing it with a pen. Or if you don't like that option, you can always use a paintbrush if you wanted to, but I found the tip of this to work just fine. Basically, it's a similar style of how I make my uh, farmhouse signs that I'm doing here. And this is the way it turned out. I let it dry for uh, 72 hours and it looks beautiful. I'm so happy with it. I cannot wait to wake, make more for Thanksgiving and stuff. Super simple way to um, make personalized decor and really give it a nice feel and touch and it looks way more expensive than it actually is which is always nice and you can use whatever you have on hand. And I just love the way it came out, especially with the Dollar Tree pumpkins and a little bit of greenery for the table setting. It is just so gorgeous. 
This is my favorite pumpkin sign to use from Dollar Tree. I start by removing the straw piece and I'm actually going to flip this sign over. I'm going to be using a white, a creamy color, and then the brown. I just start by painting the leaf brown. You can choose whatever color you want, but I like it because it made it look a little bit more rusty. And then I'm also painting the thankful sign brown as well. Then go ahead and take your white and cream base paint. You can use again whatever coloring you would like and just start painting that on to your sign until it's fully covered. Then I kind of worked my way around, around the sides of the pumpkin because again I wanted it to look like it's been out in the weather, rusted and just have a really vintage farmhouse vibe. I did use a ruler just to kind of get a semi straight line with the brown paint again and I'm going to be making a few of these. I did not measure, I just wanted it to look like kind of like an old piece of uh, wood, again weathered and aged. Add a little bit of hot glue or E6000 to your uh, word cutout of your choice and then glue that down as well as gluing down the straw. Look how cute this looks. I really like the kind of the creamy color coming out. It just again gives it that rustic vibe and you could also sand this down if you wanted to give it an even rougher look. But I think it looks good with the pumpkin that I made last year from the Dollar Tree ribbon as well as the thumbtack um, pumpkin. I just, I really like the way this whole came out. I think I'm going to use this for my fall decor this year. I first start by just painting my leaf gold and then you can also use Mod Podge on top of this as with the glitter itself or you can just tap the glitter on like I was doing to the wet paint and it did just fine. Then I went ahead and took my black, a little bit of brown and then some gold paint and mixed those together and I went ahead and just started covering the entire front part of the sign. I will say for the parts that have the white writing, you will need two coats on that specific area. Near the end, I actually had to go back and cover that up again. Using that same brush and then just kind of flattening it up a bit, I went ahead and took my creamy white paint and then kind of just lightly uh, brush stroked thin little strips on it so it looked like the wood was cracking. I wanted it to kind of have like a palette wood look to it and so that is what I'm doing here. Again, just be light on it and kind of just kind of feather that on and you can go a little bit um, larger up on the top and a little bit uh, smaller at the bottom and I kind of fanned it out a bit because most wood is not straight and then I did a little bit of detailing on the bottom so it looked like it had like a little bit of a scalloped edge to it. Then I took my smaller pointed paintbrush and I dipped that into the gold paint and made kind of like a curved stripe near the edge and I'm going to be adding some leaf detailing on this and you can freehand this but if you don't feel comfortable you can always print out something to use it kind of as a tracing guide um, but just just have fun with it guys if you mess up it's okay just paint over it with black paint and try again but I really like the way the gold paint kind of looked on this and the end piece I just kind of filled that in and now you can add a little bit of glitter or if you wanted to make some um, stripes on the leaves detailing you also could do that as well and here I'm just doing the opposite side I did go ahead near the end of this, add in a little bit of gold glitter just for that pop of shimmer so it would stand out a little bit more. Now I'm using my ruler and I'm drawing out the letters with a pencil so that way I'm not completely freehanding it because I can't freehand very well. And you can write whatever you want. For this one I'm going to be putting Hello Fall on it, but you could use whatever you would like. And again, I'm using that smaller paintbrush and using that creamy white color to fill it in. 
think the only thing I would change about this sign is instead of doing my leaf details so far out to the side, I probably would have drawn them in together at the bottom so they'd be touching, kind of like a grapevine almost, uh, versus them being separate, but that's okay. I can always make another one, right? But I really love the way this looked, and then I went ahead and took a little bit of the black paint and just brushed it over the white details so it again had a little bit more of a vintage vibe. So many cute and high-end looking decor pieces for fall that you guys can make for a fraction of the price at the retail stores. I really hope you got lots of ideas from today's video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, share it with your friends, and hit that subscribe button if you're new. I love to be able to inspire and motivate you through DIY and decorating videos, and I have so much coming up for fall, I don't want you to miss out. So until next time, you can check out the videos here on the screen or in the description box below. Have a beautiful day, and let me know, of course, which one you enjoyed the most and what you'll be recreating. I'll see you soon. Thank you.